Before we continue, we will sort our scripts into two folders. The entity folder containing all our entity related scripts and the map folder, which will include both our map manager and new scripts, procgen and rectangular room. Open the procgen script and we'll start by changing our class from public to sealed as it should never be inherited. Now remove both the start and update methods before creating a public void method called generate dungeon. This method will take in six variables within its parameters, those being map width, map height, room max size, room min size, max room, and a list containing our rectangular rooms. Before proceeding, we haven't set up our rectangular room class yet, so let's do that now. Accessing it from the primary sidebar, we are going to remove the monobehavior inheritance and generic methods, followed by giving it four public variables. These public variables being integers, they're going to consist of public int x, public int y, public int width, and public int height. x and y are the room's starting coordinates, and width and height are self-explanatory. We will then proceed to create a constructor taking in all the variables. We can now create three helper methods called center, get bounds, and get bounds int. The center method returns the centermost point of the room, and the get bounds and get bounds int methods return the area of the room, but for different reasons. I'll explain soon. But for now, we are adding a system serializable in square brackets above the class name before returning to procgen. We can now start generating our rooms, so create a for loop that sets a local variable called room num, its condition being while room num is less than room max, and if it's less, then increment. We can now establish our room size and coordinates, and create the room. Our issue now is since we're randomly smashing our rooms onto the map, we're going to run into rooms overlapping, and we don't want that now. So heading back to our rectangular room class, we are going to add a new method that returns a boolean called overlaps. This method will take in a list of rectangular room. It's pretty simple. We are using a for each to cycle through all the other rooms, checking if the area of the new room intersects with another room's area. If it does, it then returns true, else it return false. Now save and go back to procgen and add an if statement that uses our new method. This if statement will have a condition that checks if the room overlaps with another, and if it does, it will then continue to skip using it. All right, with that out of the way, time to dig out our rooms. Here, we create a for loop that handles the room's width before nesting another for loop to take the room's height. We then create an if statement that looks for the room's boundaries to build our walls. I've decided to make a boolean method called set wall tile if empty that checks using a vector3 int given if there is a floor tile on the floor map within those coordinates. It will return true, which skips placing a wall down with continue, otherwise it will place a wall. However, if it isn't a boundary coordinate, it will remove a wall tile on that position, if there is one, before placing a floor tile down. With our room created, add a statement that checks if it's the first room created, calling the create player method for map manager, passing in our new room's center. Before finally adding rooms.add new room. You might be confused about the create player method, and that's okay. We are heading over to map manager to rectify your confusion. Before we address this, let's change our code to be more in line with what we just did. We also want to make it look more readable in the editor. Start off by separating our variables and giving them meaningful headers. You will notice that included are the variables room max size, room min size, and max rooms that are being used to create our dungeon. Ensure to include list rectangular room rooms and a getter method to access it before finally also including two getter methods for our tiles. In the start method, we're going to remove our test code up until our MPC instantiate before adding in 
What's happening here is that it's going to create an instance of proc gen before calling its generate dungeon method. To do what we came here for, create a new void method called create player, which takes in a vector two position. Within it, we are just placing in our player instantiate that's been refactored to use the vector two position parameter. Before going back to proc gen, we're going to quickly import system.collections.generic. If you decided to go back to the uni editor and press play, you would have found many rooms, but with no way to move between them. So let's solve this issue by creating a new void method called tunnel between, its parameters being two rectangular rooms, representing both the old room and the new room. We will make three vector two int variables, two to get the centermost coordinates of the rooms, and one to represent the corner of the tunnel. As we will be using the Brees and Ham line algorithm to generate an L-shaped tunnel, we will create an if statement with its condition being random.value less than 0.5, which is basically a coin flip for deciding if the tunnel starts horizontally or vertically. Now introduce a new list vector to int called tunnel chords, initialize it, and call the Brees and Ham line method twice. The first passing in the old room center, tunnel corner, and then tunnel chords. The second passing in the tunnel corner, new room center, then tunnel chords. What's happening is that the first call creates a line of points from the old room center to the tunnel corner, which are then stored in the tunnel chords list. The second call does the same process, but starts on the tunnel corner before ending on the new room center. Let's create the method quickly. I won't be explaining exactly what happens, so I'll leave that to the comment section and a few links in the description. With that, proceed back to the tunnel between method, where we will create a for loop which iterates using the tunnel chords count, and then create an if statement to remove a wall tile if it exists in that coordinate. It will then add a floor tile, before surrounding that tile with walls using a nested for loop along with the set wall tile if empty method, which is basically a repeat of how we built the wall tiles for our rooms. Move back to the generate dungeon method and add an else after the if statement that created our player, within which will contain the dungeon between method, which takes in the old room, then the new room. We can now test out the fruits of our labor and laugh. Thanks for watching, be sure to comment if you have any questions, and like and subscribe if you haven't. With that, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers!